Hello Geeks, how are you doing today? Welcome to this mobile application development using Flutter video series and the topic of today's video is Stateful Widgets. Before we go ahead and do something over here, I will highly recommend go, going back and seeing my earlier videos on a stateless widget because this is in a sense a continuation of that. So, as with a stateless widget, we will create a stateful widget by extending them to stateful widget. That's not it, it's just the beginning. So, I'll have a constructor. Let's say I say this dot uh, title and this dot some text as, and I have to define them as final widget type title some text and while calling new my app I'll pass this title as new text my app and some text as new text text now when we are creating a stateful widget we create two classes one is my app another is my app state which extends from class x uh, state which is a generic class which takes my app as a parameter and inside this I will have to overwrite a, a function called create state. Create state returns the instance of this state and I say new my app state. And that's the way we create this and a stateful widget. So this syntax looks very weird but uh, just remember one thing stateful widget means first we have to create a stateful widget class which generates uh, a state which has really has the implementation of the widget now similarly uh, as with the stateless widget this also has a build function and i am going to use material app over here also so i am using material app inside the material app i am using scaffold inside the scaffold i am using app bar with new app bar inside new app bar i'll just say title as uh, this dot title ah okay now if it is a stateless widget we'll say this dot um, the value but the, these parameters are not defined in this class. This is defined here. It is referred using widget dot small w widget dot title in the app bar body. I'll say again new column and in inside the new column I'll use children's which type widget and maybe here I can say widget dot some text. So let's just uh, display things to make sure everything works fine. So we can see that these things are displayed. Now uh, as we have seen in the last video that we can add interactive widgets like flat button. So um, let's create a flat button, new flat button. Uh, it, it has two things, one pressed and child. We'll do something here that, that in the child uh, will let's say let's create a counter variable here in counter equal to zero and in the child I will label the child a new text a button uh, with counter. So if I just go ahead and hot reload it we can see a button zero is there and if I just give a dummy implementation it will be visible. Now, I want to increment counter as counter plus plus whenever the button is pressed and let me hot reload it and I am just pressing it but nothing happens. Why? Because every time any because of any event it doesn't redraw itself. To redraw this thing we have to call a specific function called set state. 
and we can just very well press the counter inside it. So set a state triggers a redraw. So now you'll see if I say it says three. Now if I print four, five, six, seven, eight. Similarly, we can create a checkbox. It's the same thing of what we did in the last video. So I'll create a value for checkbox called bool chk value equal to false for example in the beginning and I'm use this chk value here also and say new value in the implementation I'll use set state inside the set state I'll say check value equal to new value so let me hot reload it we got a uh, this checkbox bar and see this happens now okay one interesting thing let's see if i include counter plus plus over here and let me hot reload it and if i do this counter is also incrementing similarly if i say uh, check value equal to whatever the check value is opposite to check value and if i just press the button it so set state actually redraws the complete widget irrespective of whether you are calling set state for a particular checkbox or flat button so so that's the way stateful widgets are actually helpful in getting things done and that's the reason why we use stateful widget now to recap so i'm calling my app in a similar way i use called stateless widget in the my app i create the same constructor in the same way but i create a new state which is actually the implementation of the stateless widget in a create state function after that the implementation of my app state which is created out of create state is very similar to what we did in the stateless widget the only thing we have to remember is that the first class will be derived from a stateful widget the second will be derived from state and which takes the template parameter as my app so that's the way a stateful widget works and we'll explore more of it in the later videos uh, thanks a lot uh, thanks for watching please do not forget to subscribe thank you